Hi, Shannon Waller here, and welcome to the Inside Strategic Coach Podcast with Dan Sullivan. Now, in our last podcast, we talked about growing ideas, and at the end of it, we were talking about the value of questions over set answers. Mm -hmm. And really, Strategic Coach is almost an ecosystem for helping to do that. But Dan, you have a very clear perspective on why questions are more valuable than answers. So can you talk about why questions are so important to you? Well, I think the big thing, Shannon, is to differentiate right up front between what I call closed-ended questions and open-ended questions. And I don't think closed-ended questions are of any value whatsoever for developing new ideas. They're simply designed to reinforce ideas that are already there. And what I mean by that is that one of the stereotypical knocks about salespeople is that salespeople learn a set of questions where they force the customer, the prospective customer or client into a situation where they have to say yes, 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 yes. And that means that you force the person to be committed then to the answer that you want to sell them. And it's done in many realms. It's done in academia. It's done in mainstream media. It's done in the political world. You see it on film. You know, you're very clever at only asking questions. You know, the entire legal process is based that the lawyer should never ask a question that he doesn't know the answer to or doesn't ask a question that doesn't elicit the answer. But that only reinforces and possibly solidifies ideas that already exist. So that's a close-ended question, and I'm not talking about that question. I'm talking about an open-ended question. And the open-ended question is always where you put yourself in the other person's position and say, for example, one of my favorite techniques is to, you're in the present day and you said, Shannon, this is a, be an open-ended question. Shannon, you first came to Strategic Coach in 1991 and you've been there going on 30 years with Strategic Coach. If you had to compare how you're thinking about things today compared with how you thought about things in 1991, what are the three biggest insights that you've had over the last 30 years that have really made you into a different person? Okay. And you can answer the question if you want. (laughs) I'm writing down my answer. (laughs) You can answer the question if you want. I would like you to answer it because I want to just show the full asking of an open-ended question and then having someone actually answer that question. Mm -hmm. Well, to put it very succinctly, one of the biggest insights I've had is just, I would have to call it the concept of abundance versus scarcity and the fact that it's not a zero-sum game. There's lots to go around. There's a lot more ideas where that came from and that we can keep being creative and create all of the abundance, wealth, time, purpose, relationships that we want. So that would be one mm-hmm. big insight that I've had. The other big insight, which may be my favorite, is unique ability. Mm-hmm. And along with that, to me, goes unique ability to teamwork, where I can refine my thinking and my experience into those few activities that I love to do and I'm best at and I'm a hero to other people and it gives me energy and I can always see room to get better and that that is a path and that as I do that things get better as I help other people do that as I recognize that my strengths are only one small subset in the universe and if I can find the complementary ones anything and everything is possible that's part of the creation of abundance. And then the other ones kind of goes back to what we're doing right now is conversation Mm -hmm. and that so much can be created. I'm a big learner. And you said in our last podcast about putting yourself in environments or exposing yourself to new ideas. And that for me is food. And Mm -hmm. I feel like I have both the community and the people and the resources and the books, because I'm, again, a big reader, that there's no lack Mm -hmm. of new possibilities that I can go and explore. So I feel like I have a much bigger future as a result of all those three things. And I think there were seeds of those, Mm -hmm. and it's probably why I didn't fit in a lot of other environments that I had tested and why Strategic Coach was such a great fit for me. But abundance, unique ability, and as you put it in our last podcast, human conversation, for me, are probably my biggest insights that I've gained at Strategic Coach. Yeah. So 
First of all, there was an enormous amount of energy when you were <laughs> answering that question. And the thing that I'm really struck by is because of this podcast and because of the frequent uh, podcasts is that I've never really gone into conversation. Okay, so this is an idea that is coming out of two podcasts in a row mm -hmm. that we've actually done that conversation based on open-ended questions is really the breeding ground for great new ideas. Mm -hmm. And I had never expressed that. And it only came because I asked you to compare roughly 30 years of your experience and what you had learned from that. So what that shows, the dynamic of asking questions where you don't know the answer, but you're intensely interested in how someone else is entertaining the question and then looking at their experience. And I think that the most important thing about open-ended questions is they don't go to what people already know. They go to entirely unique territory where they're looking at their experience in an entirely new way. And I think that anytime someone looks at their experience in an entirely new way, they generate entirely new ideas. Mm -hmm. I think that's really true. Mm -hmm. That's a great formula. <laughs> Human conversation about open-ended questions equals is the breeding ground for new ideas. Mm -hmm. That's very, very powerful. Very yeah. cool. Yeah, it was very, very interesting when we had the big downturn, the economic downturn, 08, 09, part of 010. A lot of the entrepreneurs who were saying, you know, my customers and clients just aren't buying right now. And I said, well, are you well enough off financially that you could experiment for a quarter with a different approach than everyone else is going to approach it because everybody else is going to be uptight now. So first of all, half your competition isn't even getting out of bed these days. you know. <laughs> so I said, actually, you have far less competition right now. But I said, I'm going to make a suggestion on how you can actually approach the next quarter, and I'll tell you the idea. And, you know, if you're interested, go do it. And if you're not, then it was just an interesting idea. And I said, why don't you make a list of all your best clients and customers and invite them for breakfast, lunch, or dinner? You pick up the tab and say, I'd just like to see how you're thinking about things right now and, you know, based on the trust relationship with you have with them and go out and say, so this is probably a good time to get a um, new perspective on how your business is going because the economy is changing radically. And then you ask them the question, if we're having this discussion three years from now, what do you want to see has happened over that three-year period and get you to express that and then get them to say, what are the three biggest dangers that you have right now that you want to see eliminated three years from now, the three biggest opportunities? And this is what we call the DOS question, dangers, opportunities, and strengths, and then the three biggest strengths you have to build on. And no matter how long the meal takes, do not, do not talk to them about anything that you can sell to them. Keep totally away that you have any solution for them or anything else, but simply involve them in this conversation. And then uh, I said, report what happens at your next workshop if you're willing to do this, okay? Without question, everybody who did it said they had the best quarter they had ever had. Wow. When nobody was buying that conversation of going out and asking an open-ended question and discussion and simply going. And then I said one thing you could do is simply go back afterwards and just reflect in a letter the main points that you had captured from the conversation and just send them the letter and say, it was really a pleasure to spend time with you. And the fact that they gave the time, the fact that it was open-ended conversation where the other person did all the talking and then it got reflected back in the letter, all of a sudden established our entrepreneurs as the single most important person in that other person's life during that particular period when the economic downturn. Nobody else was listening to them. Nobody else was phoning them. Everybody was trying to sell them when they weren't buying, and they just totally differentiated themselves. But the other thing is that the customer or client of my entrepreneurs 
they were able to see their life in an entirely new way. They had new ideas about what they could do next. They were able to gain perspective in their lives. So they came back, and everybody was just super excited about it. And I said, now, I have a question for you. <laughs> I said, if this works so well at the worst of economic times, why are you ever trying to sell anything? Mm, what a great question. I said, if you just had your best quarter as a result of having this conversation, why would you ever going back to trying to sell your product or service? Why don't you just go out and have this conversation? <laughs> Which really puts a handle on what I think is the secret to constantly being a fresh and attractive and exciting entrepreneur on a nonstop basis in your life, and that is make everything about a conversation, only have the conversations about open-ended questions where the other person is able to learn new things about their experience, and specifically ask them how they want to see their future change from where it is now, and three years is a really good framework, and then reflect back to them in writing what got talked about and pick up the tab. <laughs> a key part of that. <laughs> yeah, pick up the tab. It's amazing because I've never seen it not work. It only has this virtue about it. It just always works. It's interesting because we have coached this, well, the first question is called the relationship, the R-factor question, which is if you and I are meeting here three years from today, looking back over those three years, what has to have happened for you personally and professionally for you to feel happy with your progress? And then the DOS, the dangers, opportunities, and strengths. So many people resist that question. They feel awkward. I think that there's a habit of selling. And it's almost like they're afraid to let go of one trapeze before they grab the next one. But when you do... You said this too, Dan, sometimes when you've been in conversation with a potential client and you've talked to them, as soon as you can, you ask them this particular question and you basically just listen. And then at the end, they go, oh, okay, thanks for telling me so much about the program. You make a really great point about that because you actually have told them an enormous mm -hmm. amount. Of the pro what have you told them? Well, I've told them that the program is actually about them and it's not about me. And that's the answer that they were really trying to get a handle on. You know, if I give up these number of days of my life every year and I write this check and travel, in many cases, travel for the workshop is the experience when I get there. Is that going to be about the person who's the coach or is that going to be about me as the entrepreneur? And by asking an open-ended question and then just allowing them to talk about what's on their mind, I'm essentially answering their question that What's happening right now is what's going to happen when you come to Strategic Coach. And I'm a lot more convinced about the power of this at 74 than I was at 44. I was still an answer guy at 44. <laughs> I'm not an answer guy anymore because my answers really aren't that interesting to them. They're interesting to me, but they're not interesting to them. What's interesting to, I think, anyone who qualifies as one of our target entrepreneur, you know, they're, they're talented, they're successful, and they're ambitious. I think that the answers that they really want is their own uniquely new answers based on seeing their own experience in a uniquely new way, and I can trigger that. You most definitely can. I'm trying to think of how many open-ended questions are in strategic coach. Yeah, well, there are no close-ended questions in the strategic <laughs> coach. You know, we don't get people to memorize anything in the coach. We don't get people to memorize definitions. The only thing that I've come close to asking people to memorize is the actual wording of a question. Like the R factor uh, question? Like the DOS question. And even there, I said, well, you know, it works better if you don't have to think about it. You know, I mean, if you have memorized the question. I don't think I've ever ask people to memorize anything else in Strategic Coach because I'm not trying to communicate answers to them. I'm trying to communicate better ways to access their own brain by being in the right circumstances with uh, other brains. I just love everything you're saying because it's such a great way to describe A, what you do, and B, what the program does. Mm -hmm. And I'm just thinking about the mindset it takes. I love how you described it. If you want to be a fresh, exciting entrepreneur, you almost need to come at things from this 
open-ended, not knowing the answer already mindset, Mm -hmm. which means I wrote down the word curious. Like you just have to be really, really curious about what the future looks like for somebody else. You know, what are they up to? What does their experience tell you? What can they tell you about their experience? And it makes for very dynamic conversations when you don't know the answer already. It's totally yeah, different. I often wonder what's the barrier that keeps people from going there because I really had this down pat when I was a child. <laughs> you know, I really found I could operate in the world of big people when I was a little person. And I think it is that you've been brainwashed almost that the winners in life have all the answers, okay? So so much of the academic world is accumulating answers. Mm -hmm. And that no matter where you are, you've got an answer for what's going on. And to me, the real key that I had become really skillful is that regardless of the situation, I always had a question that broke things open, that broke the conversation open. And I think that there's a terror that a lot of people have of not being able to hold on to their answers, of being in a circumstance. And I think it comes from long, long experience, starting with the school system, starting with how they communicated with their parents and everything else, where they had to have an answer. You had to have an answer. And my feeling is that answers are very perishable these days. You know, the shelf life of an answer, in some cases, you know, it doesn't last more than a day. It might be good today, but it won't be good tomorrow. But really great questions. I think that the R factor question we have, if I had asked it 5,000 years ago, it would have had the same impact. If I ask it 10,000 years into the future, it will still elicit the same response. So my feeling is stockpile things that don't wear out, stockpile things that are always fresh, stockpile things that always produce great results. Don't stockpile things that are going to wear out in a, a month, a week, a, a day, or an hour, mm-hmm. you know, because then you're constantly worrying about running out of gas. You're worried about being left behind. You're worrying about being bypassed. But people who ask great questions are always up to date and relevant. Well, it's interesting, Daniel. I'm thinking about our clients who come to you with life-changing situations, you know, relationships or selling their businesses. As you said, you have a key question. Mm -hmm. And they're like, kind of snaps their head around. I've seen their, they're like, oh my gosh. And you cut right to the heart of the matter in terms of what the essence of the situation is. And they get a whole new insight into what their future is going to be about. One of the big things is that a lot of my questions are time-based in the sense that I don't think that problems that are really bogging people down in the present can be answered with a present perspective because right now they're bogged down and there's nothing in the present that really supports a solution to their problem. And you have to move them out of the present into the future. And I found that three years is really a great way. And I simply say, well, okay, let's let's move ahead, not where you are right now, but let's move ahead three years from now. And I said, so three years from now, if we were looking back from three years, what has to happen in your life? Not in relationship to this problem, but just in relationship to everything. And by not zeroing in on the problem, you're not reinforcing it. And by going into the future, you're giving person some perspective. And then you're talking about everything going on in their life, not just this one thing. And I find that just by getting them to engage in looking where they have to be three years, dangers that have to be eliminated, opportunities that have to be captured, strengths that have to be maximized. All of a sudden they say, gee, I know what I have to do here. And oftentimes they don't even tell me what they're going to do. (laughs) And to tell you frankly, I don't really need to know what they're going to do. The only thing I need to know is that they've restored perspective to their present way of looking at things. And now they, where they didn't see any way forward, they want to get going as fast as they possibly can. So I'm very impressed with this conversation we're having because I don't think that we've really put enough emphasis on the, the idea creation that comes out of a particular type of question. 
I agree, Dan. We haven't really delved deep into that. And one of our clients describes strategic coach as an entrepreneurial ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And I would say of open-ended questions Mm -hmm. and human conversation, which generates all these incredible ideas. So kind of a nice way to sum up what you've been doing and how you put it into a structure that really works for all of our clients because they get asked that question, they get that restored perspective every 90 days. But then you also equip our clients with questions that they can go out and do that for their clientele. I'm really struck by how much this is central to the DNA of Coach, is that it's all about what's going on in our entrepreneurial clients' minds, not what they're thinking about what we're thinking, but what are they thinking about what they're thinking. And I just had an example this current quarter, and this is at the 10 Times program with a lot of clients who are actually going on to the Game Changer program. I just have this little exercise where I say, write down your gross income for your company for the past year, you know, dollars in, and let's say it was $15 million. And I say, okay, that's last year. Now I want you to multiply this by 100. And I want to tell you that the correct answer at the result of this has the word billion in it. <laughs> so they write down 1.5 billion. And you can just see every head in the room is kind of going like this. And I say, now, right below this, I want you to write down the five reasons why the number that you just wrote down is completely and totally impossible. And they'll write this down, and you can see them. All of a sudden, their brain is starting to work with this, you know. And they're sitting there, and I've just jarred them with a mathematical calculation that they have never done in (laughs) regard to their future before. But then I give them, say, now, just tell me all the reasons why this is impossible. They can do this in about three or four minutes. All of a sudden, it breaks open, and I don't actually know exactly what's happened inside their brain specifically. I know generally what's happened, but I don't know specifically. And then I have them talk to each other. I say, I want you to talk about this experience. I want you to talk about the number you put down and then why this is impossible. And then they start saying, well, if you looked at it this way, how would you do it? And if you looked at it this way, well, maybe it's a hundred times the amount, but it's not a hundred times the amount of work, it's not 100 times. And so all of a sudden, they're off and running. You know, I was designing this entire exercise, and I drew the whole exercise about a minute, but I've been so through the process going back more than 40 years since I started coaching, but almost 30 years since we started the workshop program, where I've taken people through questions where I just let them have the answer that came up. And It wasn't for me to know what their answer was. It was for them to know the answer. And all of a sudden, new ideas came to them, new possibilities came to them. And that's really the essence of coach, is that we get them to think about their thinking in a way that they generate entirely new futures, entirely new possibilities, and entirely new capabilities for actually getting to those futures. And all we have to do is ask a question or get them to do some sort of thinking that breaks things open. Mm, Brilliant, Dan. Thank you so much. As we wrap up, I want to let everyone know that we actually do have the DOS conversation in a knowledge product form. So if you want the book or the form or the audio, go to our our Strategic Coach store and look up the DOS conversation, and you'll have even more information about the value of that particular open-ended question. In addition to the DOS conversation, be sure to check out the self-managing company knowledge product as well. It tells you a lot more about the program and a lot more about the process and structure of how you can use these questions to build your own self-managing company. Dan, thank you for a very enlightening and enlivening conversation. I've appreciated it. Thank you. Thank you.